Extract fault. Switch six four. Wind one eight zero degrees six knots. Runway one six. Clear for takeoff. Fuel time. Takeoff. Rotate. Get up. Get up. Hi, my name is Swaili. Hi, my name is Serfina. And uh, welcome to another episode of Inside the Airline. Today we will be talking about the Operational Control Center, the nerve center of every airline. Whisking your way to your destination and conveniently taking for granted the on-time departure and arrival of your aircraft whenever you travel. I'm sure most of you are guilty of going through this process. However, behind the scenes, there are many dedicated individuals help to ensure that your flight leaves on time most of the time. I present to you the Flight Control Center or FCC. Flight Control Center, also known as Operational Control Center or OCC for short, is the heart and soul of airline operations and represents the coordination hub where the many parts of the airline operational control merge together to work as one collective, effective unit. In a mission control light atmosphere, passionate professionals work hand in hand in a large room with a massive screen, assisting in their pre planning, flight monitoring, onward assistance, as well as the coordination of several flights in a typical 8-10 to 10 hour shift. Each day starts with a meeting in the morning, which is chaired by the duty manager, who is responsible for the execution of all network operations and brings up issues and concerns which might affect the day's operations. An example of this being the possibility of some sort of natural disaster. Singapore Airlines, a name I'm sure we're all familiar with. Founded nearly 70 years ago, it is Singapore's flag carrier and operates as a major international airline. With a fleet size of more than 100 aircraft, it conducts more than 230 flights daily. These flights are planned and coordinated by and from the Operations Control Center. This OCC has a simple mission, coordinate and execute network operations, hence providing customers with the best possible flight schedules. The most common obstacle will obviously be the weather, but that's not all, as there are also technical issues, air crew and passenger behaviour, as well as anything else that could be thrown at them. It is a demanding job only for the most dedicated of individuals, requiring extreme diligence, efficiency and the utmost professionalism. The OCC plays a huge role in making decisions that concern worldwide disruptions such as the rebooking of a passenger stuck overseas or the overhaul of an engine outside of the country of operations. Whatever the disruption, it has consequences within the OCC. Each and every flight starts with a flight plan, which is drawn up by dispatch. The cockpit crew go over the flight plan in the crew center and if everything checks out, off they go on their flight. With all the traffic that is going throughout the air network, there are bound to be some delays at a certain part of the network. This delay could be as minor as a traffic delay at a certain airport or as big as an incident involving an aircraft. Contrary to what you might believe, these incidents are actually common. However, they are dealt with by the FCC professionally, efficiently and expertly to minimize the delay in the network. The Flight Control Center is well equipped to manage the airline's network. The large screen we previously mentioned at the front of the room provides a real-time view of the location of every aircraft in the fleet anywhere in the world with its scheduled flight and registration. The aircraft schedule, estimated time of arrival and fuel situation are displayed on almost every computer screen within the room. This is to allow a controller to determine if an aircraft is still on its planned schedule or in need of assistance. Weather With its unpredictable nature, it is easily the most disruptive factor. Hence, radar displays are an effective countermeasure and a major weather tool for the dispatcher. 
Narrator with their charts and displays portray all pertinent information concerning the intensity, configuration, coverage, type, and movement of precipitation. This information may, at times, supplement the radar information displayed in the cockpit of an aircraft. Working together, the pilot in command and dispatcher may collectively decide on a preferred route or reroute around significant weather. At times, the type of aircraft with its particular performance characteristics and limitations may be a critical factor in weather planning and on-route decision making. My dedicated staff and I are always motivated to ensure that our flights arrive and depart on time, um, keeping up with our industry high on-time performance. In VOCC, we manage around 200 flights per day and we manage it uh, by our dispatch de department. Managing this huge number of flights requires a huge number of, amount of cooperation between the members in the OCC. Together, we will look after the safe and on-time departure and arrival of flights in our network. However, things do not always run so smoothly. Unforeseen events such as the recent snowstorm in Europe, tropical storms of the east or southeast Asia, and even volcanic eruptions all have to be taken into account. There is always a planning phase beginning with alerts from our outstations or from the relevant authorities of weather channels so that we can plan to put more fuel on our aircraft. As such, it's not like we are totally unprepared for such situations. Once the aircraft is launched, if there is a possible delay en route due to the weather, we can try to reroute the aircraft to avoid the adverse weather systems. With a fleet of more than 100 aircraft and the planned addition of around 80 new jets within the next few years, the Flight Operations Control Center will be kept busy scheduling and monitoring flights around the network. In the Network Control Center, we can integrate them within just a couple of more stuff here and there. So it's actually not that manpower intensive to, have, to operate more aircraft. We are currently in discussion with our base airport regarding the future expansion and we'll see how it goes on from here. So what about flight delays caused by grounding of airplanes or flight crew exceeding their flight duty period? As of last year, December, 1,290 flights operated by Singapore Airlines exceeded by at least 15 minutes. So, how does the FCC actually handle this kind of problem? Our airline has invested a lot in reserve aircraft so we try as much as possible to make use of them. The same concept applies to our flight crews as they are supposed to be on standby in case of any illness reported by our previous crews at Changi Airport or any of our, any of our substations around the world. However, our main policy still stands to be maintaining top safety and minimally cancelling flights if possible. What if the passenger experienced an illness aboard one of the many aircraft flying around the world? In-flight medical emergencies occur in one in every 600 flights, according to an article in New England Journal of Medicine. This means that there are roughly 150 medical emergencies occurring worldwide every single day, while the plane is in the air. In any, of our, in any case of our passengers getting seriously ill on board, we will be obliged to make an intermediate landing at an airport in order to get them to a hospital as soon as possible. Before that, we have to be in contact with the aircraft by means of satellite communication, whereby we have a discussion together with our airline's operation staff to determine the necessity of making an intermediate landing. Finally, the pilot in command, the one who decides whatever is best for the situation, will have a crucial say for the particular case on board his aircraft. With thousands of aircraft departing every day and with small percentage of delays, the OCC should be greatly credited for their effort in ensuring that the flights are kept on time and ensuring that the passengers arrive at their destination safely and efficiently. In the aviation industry, safety and efficiency is the utmost importance as the smallest mistake in the aviation industry could lead to a huge consequence. This is why 
the heart of the ally, the OCC, is the key to every success to every ally. With this, we end today's episode. This is Captain Susie signing off.